Welcome back to another study of men and women of the Old Testament. We are going to be studying about two lives today. We're going to study first the life of Samuel, and then we'll look at the life of Saul. Samuel had a mother named Hannah, and Hannah was barren, and she prayed and made a vow to God for a son, for Samuel 1, 10 through 11. This actually, her barrenness caused quite a lot of problems between Elkanah's other wife and Hannah, and Elkanah's other spouse was very critical and ridiculed, basically, Hannah for being barren, and this rivalry that was taking place between the two of them simply because Hannah could not have children and the other wife could. So Hannah made this vow and prayed to God, and her vow was a promise to give that son to God all the days of his life, and no razor would touch his head. He would go under what we call the Nazarite vow. Uh, Basically, he would fulfill that vow. No razor would touch his head, and Samuel is then born. Uh, He was then weaned, of course, born born to Hannah, weaned, and when he was finally able to kind of be able to be taken care of by Eli and didn't need the motherly help that Hannah could provide, she took him to Shiloh and presented him to Eli. The Lord then blessed Samuel and said, let none of his words fall on the ground, 1 Samuel 3.19. That's after the prophecy that Samuel made about Eli's household and that God had rejected his house for what Eli had allowed to happen in the priestly matters between his two children, Hophni and Phinehas. And Samuel makes this proclamation from the Lord, and the Lord says, let none of his words fall on the ground. All of Israel from Dan to Beersheba is then told in chapter 3 and verse 20 that Samuel is now the prophet of the Lord. He has basically been established as a prophet of the Lord, and what he says is not his own words. They are the Lord's. And after Eli's death, Samuel also became a judge of Israel. Samuel was the last of the judges, and Hebrews lists him with those of faith who pleased God, Hebrews 11, 32, and 33. And he anointed two kings, that would be Saul and David, 1 Samuel 15, 1, 1 Samuel 16, 13. And he died and was mourned by all of Israel, 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. As we move on to the life of Saul, we want to look at, first of all, the fact that just like we mentioned a moment ago, he was anointed by Samuel as the first king of Israel, 1 Samuel 15, 1, and Saul was head and shoulders above the people. There was no doubt whatsoever, and this was not about his stature in, in the sense of as a king, but his physicalness, his physical stature. He was, as we might say, tall, dark, and handsome. Saul was spiritually weak, though, and that was his major issue in his life. He was physically beautiful, physically well-off, but spiritually he was weak, and he sinned by not obeying God's commands in 1 Samuel 13 and especially chapter 15. In 1 Samuel 13, he was told by God to utterly – or not utterly destroy the Amalekites, but he offered a sacrifice. That's chapter 15. He offered a sacrifice in chapter 13 that he was not scripturally authorized to offer simply because Samuel had not come in the days allotted. And in chapter 15, he's told to utterly destroy the Amalekites, and instead of doing that, he keeps the king and some of the livestock and some of the good things alive and only really destroys that which was not profitable to them. And so he lost his kingdom as a result. God rejected him as king for his sins. Saul goes on in his life, and David becomes quite successful, and he becomes jealous over David's success. In 1 Samuel 18, 6 through 16, you have this group of women singing that Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was so jealous that he tried to kill David, in fact, and David went on the run for many, many months trying to avoid being murdered by the very king that he would one day replace. And at the end of Saul's life, He was in battle, and after serving 40 years in Israel, rather than letting the enemy take them into captivity, he fell on his sword and ended his life by suicide, 1 Samuel 31, 1 through 6. As we look at our cards for this week, I want us to first notice that card number 59 says that he was – who was born in answer to Hannah's prayer? Well, that would be Samuel, 1 Samuel 1, 5 through 21. In card number 60, it says Samuel dedicated to God before his birth, 1 Samuel 1, 11 through 22. Samuel's first vision was about Eli, 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 15. And card number 62 says Samuel was both a prophet and a judge, 1 Samuel 3, 20, 7, chapter, or chapter 7, verses 15 through 17. 
Card number 63 through 66 says, who was the last judge? Well, we know that to be Samuel. And who was the first king? We know that to be Saul, 1 Samuel eleven fifteen 15, and chapter 12 and verse 1. Saul was rejected as king for his disobedience, 1 Samuel 13 and chapter 15. Saul died by his own hand or suicide, 1 Samuel 31, 1 through 6. The life of Samuel and Saul are incredibly important. They're very critical to the mindset of Christians today as we study to learn, according to Romans 15 and verse 4, about the things that are written in that Old Testament. And the life of Samuel and Saul are definitely lives that are both worth imitating and not worth imitating. And we need to always be considering our lives and making sure that we don't fall into the same trap that Saul did. And we try to do what Samuel did, which is to encourage people to seek the paths that God has set before them. I want to thank you for studying with us and have a great day.